Hi, this is a demo part one of the personality quiz calculator. When we think about a personality quiz, like on some place like BuzzFeed or something like that, you click on an answer and you click on a set of answers and then after a while you get a result. How do we go about that? Let's talk about this first. So step one, which all we want to do is just first get the value of users' answers. We can think about this in English before we code. User selects answers. So then we have to think about, okay, well, um, when a user selects an answer, how do I store that response from the user? So that's our input. And then two, at the end, it gets averaged and the user is given their results. I'll just copy this over here from my notes. So that's where we're going to start. Here's my empty jQuery template. First, I'm just going to go ahead and copy over the styling from my other page and just go ahead and paste them over here into this style tag. I will go from the top to the bottom so you guys can see all of them. The CSS is just for styling. You can change these things yourself. This is what I did to just kind of make the page work and make sense. Go through this and type it yourself. And not all of these styles are going to be seen in the first example. So let's do some HTML. So I decided to do a generic sort of a thing. And I'll just go ahead and copy and paste in the structure here. You can uh, duplicate it on your own. But I will talk about this first area. This quiz area allows me to hold different sections. Since each of these sections are pretty much the same, let's just talk about what's in them. First, I have an H3 for styling, and this class question allows me to find out how many items have the class of question on it. That's important at the end, and you'll see why in a minute. Next, I have this container called answers. And that way, I can find all of the items with the answer class within the larger answer parent, and each one has a data dash attribute, data dash value have a numeric value for what the answer would be. In this case, I just have 1 equals 1, 2 equals 2, 3 equals 3, 4 equals 4. When we go down to question 2, we can see 5, 6, 7, 8. It's the same order. And then this little button holder is going to be for when we progress later. So then last but not least, then I have a button that when everything's done, I'm going to click on to finish or give a response to my set of answers up top. And now the part you have been waiting for, the JavaScript. For our questions, we can select all of the items that have the class of question. Dot length. Now what's cool about this is jQuery will take all the items that have the class of question on them and put them in a node list. And then when we get dot length, it'll tell us how many questions there are on the page. Let's say I want to add a new question. I can just go ahead and create a new section. That section will have an item with the class of question on it. And then that will be answered for me dynamically. I don't have to put like a specific static number like four and then, oh, I've added a new question I need to increase that to five. This will automatically get however many questions I have on the page. Then I need something that's going to store the total value. So whatever answers the user selected is going to be stored right here. Initially, I'm going to start it out with a value of zero, which makes it super easy to add numbers to it. So if I wanted to do plus equals and this wasn't initialized at zero, I'd get an error. I want to make sure that this is a numeric data type and not undefined or something else like that. Var average, I want to average the total by the number of questions. Right now I'm going to set this value to zero because this is going to store the average of the answers the user selected. The first thing I want to do is go out and get those answers. So I can just do, do dot answer and add a click event to each one. jQuery makes life easy for us to do that. We can make sure that we tell the user that they've selected that item by using the keyword this. As we've seen in class, the keyword this is whatever item called the function to run. We can add a class. So this tells the user, oh, I've picked this answer. I'm going to add to the total plus equals this. 
and I'm going to get its data dash uh, value attribute. I can use the data method from jQuery because this is a jQuery object uh, because we put it into the jQuery selector and say hey give me your data that has a, a value or data dash value right so this will get us the value of our data dash value and then add it to whatever the current total is and I can see that directly if I just go to console.log and total. I'm saving that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, open in browser. And so I can see like when I hover over, I've got this lovely cadet blue looking thing. When I click on an element like this two, it gives me the total. This is my console log here too. If I click on this, it gives me five. I'm like, oh wait, uh, I don't necessarily want that. Right? I'm going to like get to the end and I'm going to have this huge total. Right now I don't have an average, but I could make an average by taking whatever the current value of total is and then dividing it by questions. Well, six is far larger than my available answers. I have four types based off of four potential answers here. So an average really should be at most four. So that's a problem and I can fix that. So let's do that. So one of the things that I might want to do in this situation is I want to be able to have the users change their answers. So we can build upon this, right? We see that there's a problem with the way that we're doing something. We want to make sure that we can say, hey, I want the users to be able to change their minds or change their answers. And then the next question becomes, well, how do I ensure that the, the total has integrity? What we'll do is we will check to see if a section already has been answered and then here we can do this. If jQuery this and we can traverse the document object model with the parent method. What was clicked, let's go up to its parent and then find class of selected. I'm going to use dot length. I'm going to check to see if there's one so greater than zero. Then I'm going to take whichever item has the class of selected on it and subtract its value from the total. Just grab this line of code, copy, paste. And what I need is its data dash value. So whatever was selected, if there was something selected, whatever was selected is now going to have that value removed. I'm then also going to remove that class from that element. So it's no longer selected. Then it's going to take, you know, whatever you clicked on, add the class of selected to it, and then add its uh, data dash value to the total. So that'll fix that little bit. I have, still haven't even gotten to the finish button yet, but we'll get there. So back to the browser. This is where we were. So now when I am um, in this area, these all are children of a div called answers. If I change my mind and I decide I want to select one, the new total is one. If I want to then turn around and select seven, um, you can see this value has three, so my new total is four. If I change my mind and want to select eight, the new total is five, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I can do all of that. And now if I were to take total and divide it by questions, I get a 2.5. So my average answer would be three. So yeah, I've got a one, I've got uh, a four, I've got a three, and I've got a two. So 2.5 is the average, and uh, that ends up rounding up to 3. So 3 would be my result. We'll do that now in the uh, space where I can click on this button and have it do essentially do this for me. Let's grab our finish button, the jQuery selector, and use the on method. We'll pass it an anonymous function as its secondary and required argument. I can get my average, redeclare it in here, and make it a local variable. But I think I'll just go ahead and say avg equals total divided by questions. So this will give us that answer. 
and I'll create a variable called message that we'll send to the user. And I'm just going to set it as an empty string. I'll just be resetting its value based off of what the condition of average is. So here I can say if AVG, so less than 1.5, you know that the average is less than 1.5. That means they've probably answered a greater majority of one type answers. They are one type. Then we can check against other values, so like with else if, and we can say AVG is less than 2.5. And same thing, AVG uh, less than 3.5. Then there are three else. I'll just put semicolons here and semicolons here. You get a semicolon, you get a semicolon, everybody gets a semicolon. All we need now is to type an alert, then we can try this. So let's go back to our browser. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to click on these different answers. We can see if I click on 6, I get the answer 5 because 3 plus 2 is 5. But let's say I change my mind. The difference between 2 and 4 is an additional 2, so it took away my old value and added this value instead. 3 plus 4 is 7. What happens if I skip section 4 and I hit this what am I button? Well, it gives me a value of 2. Well, my total is 9 and it is divided by 4, so that's going to be definitely a different value. If I go in here and I go total and I divide it by questions, it's going to give me that 2.5 answer. And so in our code, it asks if it's less than 2.5, then you're going to be a two type. Well, I've missed a question. If I click in and I've gotten all of the questions and I hit what am I, I now get I'm a three type because I've averaged three because 12 divided by four is three. How do I ensure that my user has answered all of these questions before I give them a total? What I might do is check to see if all of the items that have the class of select on them or selected on them, if those all match up the number of questions I have, then I know I have at least one answer for every section. So let's do that. I'm going to find all of the items that have the class of selected on it by um, just doing the jQuery selector and selected. We can also get how many are there. If it is both the same value and type as questions, remember we did questions.length up top, told us how many questions there were. If they match, then we know that we have uh, an answer for every question. And we're going to do some code based off of that condition. We can then turn around and um, set the value of message to equal um, you missed at least one question. So I'm going to take this conditional statement because I only want this conditional statement to run or to be checked if they've answered all the questions. And I'll go ahead and tab this in for visual clarity. This if lines up with this else. This is a larger if else statement. If they have answered all of the questions, then I want to go ahead and do this and set the value of message. And then um, either way, it will alert a message, either the they've missed a question and we tell the user that they've missed a question or it will give you your answer of what type of number you are. Let's see this in action. Let's check that too. I can just go ahead and I'll go ahead and just answer two uh, for all but the last one and it should come up with a message of you missed at least one question and there it is. Say okay. 14 and then I'll answer and then it tells me I'm a two type because I primarily selected two values, right? 2, 6, 10, 14. Yep. Now let's say I change my mind. I go, oh, I get a new type. I'm a three type now.
So that is the end of part one. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, make a comment or uh, contact me uh, via our class. Thank you, and happy, happy coding, everyone.